Hey guys, this is Appa with Appa Talks, and I have an exciting update for you, which involves AI. Uh, specifically, we're going to start looking at Google's Palm API, uh, which powers the Bard uh, chat that is really hot in the news today. So stick around and let's have some fun. Hey everyone, so as you know uh, from my previous videos, I am really into the AI world these days and I've been devving around with ChatGPT and have been having an amazing amount of fun. Uh, but it seems like almost every day there is a new technology, new update, something that's happening in the AI world that's just a leap and bound than the day before. And it's pretty amazing um, out there. I've been trying to keep track of these as best I can, but in reality, there's just <laughs> way too many. So I've been focusing on a handful. Uh, one of those is what's powering um, the direct competitor to ChatGPT, which is Google's Bard, which had that amazing rollout. Uh, if you remember from last month or so ago, where they lost billions of dollars in market value. Well, they've since launched a new version, uh, or they've actually been working on it in the back end. And uh, if you have signed up for the wait list, uh, you might be lucky enough to get the API uh, uh, granted to you. So um, last week, I was granted uh, Google... Palm API. Uh, it's actually called Palm 2, um, but I want to go ahead and walk you guys through some of the deving that I've built out. That way, maybe you can get a jump on it, because right now there is literally no information on how to actually do any of this. I kind of had to uh, muddle my way through building my first application using ChatGPT to help me, by the way. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So here we are, uh, the developers.generativeai.google portal um, now when you want to when you want to if you want to sign up for it you should be able to go ahead and just go to palm api uh, somewhere in here there's like a sign up link uh, to get to it ah here we go so if you go to the developers generative ai dot google no dot com interesting um, there's going to be a section here that says uh, sign up for the waitlist or whatnot. And then once you get the waitlist approved uh, for through your Google account, you get two products. You get the API access itself, and then you get Maker Suite. Maker Suite's pretty interesting, similar to OpenAI's Developer Playground. Uh, that's basically what this is. It's a it's a playground so that you can start creating your own um, you know generative text and whatnot. So it's pretty cool. Um, but I prefer direct API coding myself, so we're going to just jump into that. Uh, I think I've opened this too many times. But uh, basically what happens when you look at the API, uh, you got some, or let's start with this. In order to enable the API after you've been granted access, uh, you're going to need to log into your Google Cloud account. Um, through the libraries, you'll have to search for the Generative la Language API, and you'll have to enable that. Um, there's lots of great guides on how to enable API access with Google Cloud, if you're not familiar with it. Um, for example, I work in all kinds of hypervisors out there, AWS, Azure, Oracle, I really have uh, much experience with Google Cloud. It took me less than, a, less than a day to figure this out, so you all can do it too. But yeah, once you enable it, you need to generate your own API key, and then you can start playing around with the various calls and structures and all that fun stuff that that makes uh, Palm AI do its magic. Right now, I am using the chat Bison model, which I think is their chat uh, model similar to Bard, maybe? I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that, uh, but I do know this is the same technology that powers it. Um, now, this is just where you want to look up for the, the API calls, but I want to actually show you the code uh, that you can run today with very minimum effort to get that same uh, functionality uh, that you get from the BARD website uh, or from the, uh, from the OpenAI website. So I have this repository called ChatGPT HTML. I originally uh, wrote this wrapper to interact with the OpenAI API. So if you wanted to run this, you could just get clone it. And um, there's really one thing that you need to do, and that is modify the config.json file, which would contain your various API keys. Now, for this discussion only, really all you need is a Google Palm API key that you would have generated through this portal right here. All right, 
Um, now, if you wanted to have fun, I also have built-in AWS Poly for text-to-speech. Um, I've built-in Google Search API to directly hook into OpenAI's ChatGPT, so I can just say something like, Google this, and it will return the results for me, which is really awesome. Took me a while to figure that out. Um, very recently, I got the Google Palm uh, API so that I can show you guys this, uh, this brown bag. So let's go through the code real quick for what I want to talk about specifically, and that is the Google Palm um, JavaScript that we are going to do here. So basically, uh, just going through it real quickly, we're going to authorize uh, to the API services that we've done through Google's cloud. Uh, I'm setting an array for Palm messages in order to keep memory. Uh, I'm also in the beginning of the script, I'm checking to see if there's anything already stored there so that it can be uh, added or appended to the conversation. Uh, setting as S question is basically my, my question to the bot. <clears throat> and this is getting pulled through the HTML file, the uh, chatgpt.html file that you'll find in the root of this repository. Um, if there's no, there's some, there's some error logic, very basic error logic here. Uh, and then here we're going ahead and choosing the model name. In this case, chat bison 001. You'll be able to cross-reference that with the API referencing in Google Clouds um, or in this generative documentation. All right, and then from there we're, uh, let's see, what are we doing? We're authing, getting the question, and then we're passing it to the actual endpoint for the generative AI. Interesting to note, it's a beta model, so I'm very curious to see it, to see uh, what kinds of um, leaps and bounds they make over the weeks and months of time to come. All right, we're going ahead and uh, formulating our REST response uh, or payload or whatever. And then um, I'm setting, I like to call my chatbot uh, named Eva. My daughters went ahead and decided that name. I'm just giving it a very basic set of context here. Uh, your general uh, model, you have to provide accurate answers. I want you to be honest, straightforward, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there is a section for examples. Uh, in the API documentation, you can kind of guide how the bot will respond to you. I'm assuming like language nuances and things you can put in there so it can kind of follow that. I'm not playing with around with that right now. Well, I need to get this all flushed out before before I get really deep into the into this. But anyway, um, what I'm doing for the message payload is I'm concanting, uh, I'm, I'm combining uh, previous messages um, and then sending them along. You'll notice author starts with a zero, in order for this array to work, it has to be alternate, alternating authors. So author zero, author one, author zero, author one, uh, and so on, in order to keep the context of the previous messages. Uh, what Palm AI will do is automatically uh, truncate those messages when they get too large, which is awesome. I don't have to def for that. You got your similar things for OpenAI uh, carried over here. I guess that's going to be a a generative texting for the future for maybe all models going forward or different AIs. It'll be interesting to see. We got temperature top K. Candidate count is how many times how many times it will create a response for you, uh, and you can review. So in Bard, you know you have uh, drafts or something like that. You can see draft one, two, and three. All right, uh, here we're using fetch. Uh, don't ask me if this is secure or not. So I wouldn't recommend pushing this to. <laughs> production unless you really know what you're doing. But um, I have seen right now that it does return uh, no responses. Like there's some filtering, but a lot of the filtering is either safety filtering or some other kind of filtering. And then there's an other filtering that has no reason why it filtered it. And um, for example, I can ask it, what's your name? And then it'll come back with um, filtered other. <laughs> okay. So I sent feedback to uh, Google. Hopefully they'll give us more verbosity in that. Uh, in any case, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Some of the API responses have the citation flags uh, as part of the JSON response. And these will list links, uh, URL links that it finds, which are valid. So there's a section to include that if it's found in the response. A little verbosity for me while I'm deving. Uh, and here's how we're pushing the messages. Uh, S question is me, formatted results is the bot. 
Uh, let's see what else. And then we're just storing it back into uh, local browser storage to rinse and repeat. And if any error happens, it'll show me in the console. So let's go through a quick demo. What's my timing here? Uh, dun, 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 dun. Why does it not say? Oh, it's 10 minutes. Good. I'm on time. All right. So here is my bot. Um, very simple. I, and for this purpose, we're just talking about Palm, but if you wanted to play around with this particular code, you could drop in your open API key and you'll have access to chat GP 3.5. I've coded it for four and 32. I don't have access to that yet. So I don't know if those work, but the structure should be, um, should be the same. So in theory, it should work. If anyone wants to test that, let me know. That'd be awesome. Um, and then for fallback, I have text DaVinci 03 when you're using GPT Turbo. Sometimes uh, chat GPT will say, I'm sorry, I'm an AI and I don't know how to answer this. So if that happens, I tell um, I tell it to fall back. But in our, in our case, we're talking about Palm, i.e. Bard, uh, assuming the model's the same, I'm not 100% sure. Um, and what I have right here is the developer console so we can see what's happening in real time. All right, so step number one, let's change this over to Palm. And we're just gonna send a very simple query. Uh, Hi, my name is Steven. Uh, actually, my name is Bob. Or no, 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 my name is Appa Talks. <laughs> <laughs> actually, let's let's do that. Actually, I'm curious what she'll remember. Actually, my name is Appa Talks. All right, so we got two responses sent. You'll notice down here we got the um, the 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 payloads going on. So what we're going to look at is uh, so there's the response coming back from Google's API. Uh, we got uh, the candidate is. What is that? Oh, that's the response. Okay. And then here's the uh, history. So, hi, my name is Steven. Hi, Steven. It's nice to meet you. Author back. Uh, and then me. So, me, bot, me, bot, me, bot, me, bot, me, bot. Payload contains everything. Um, it might contain, uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I'm going to have to hide that. Um, or whatever. But anyway, uh, yeah, it contains the same thing. Um, and then there you go. So let's go to the application side and then we can take a quick look at how this is being stored in memory. Uh, and I have two, two things here. Palm messages is what we're curious about. And there you go. That's how it's done and pulled back. Master output is for me uh, so that if I wanted to print our whole conversation, it can do that. And then let's just uh, quickly go through a little bit more discussion. I like ice cream. And it should say something like ice cream is awesome or whatever. Let's give it to next thing. So what is the origin of Windows? This is a great question because I know it will respond back with citations, which I accidentally fumbled across. And I was like, why is it not responding to me until I debugged it? I was like, oh, these citations. Um, I want to show you that real quick. It's probably thinking in the background, and if it is thinking in the background, you can look. Oh, there we go. So, uh, yep, here's citations, and the way that is formatted, let's go to the response for this particular call, which is the last one right here. We can see it gives us uh, citations. So I had to code for that. And then, uh, yeah, pretty awesome stuff. Let's do just one real quick thing, um, so I can clear the memory. So we can start like a fresh, fresh session, and uh, I can also talk. She can talk back to me using the <laughs> Poly APIs, but that's out of scope right now. Hi Eva. Hi Eva. Uh, what were the results of the latest uh, U.S. elections? Uh, I'm hoping it understands like 2020 something was that or and. Basically, you're watching this in real time with me, and let's see. Yeah, so 2020, whatever. The quadrennial elections held, blah, blah, blah. Donald Trump, etc. lost. Let's see if it puts any spin in here. Uh, the election was held. Cool, an attempt, etc. Wait, what? Uh, Trump. <laughs> so there is some stuff in here about whatever, but it did give me a Wikipedia, so... We can just quickly verify that this is a real link, and then we'll end the video here. 
and it's a real link. So that is my little brown bag on uh, my code for using the Palm API. You guys are more than free to steal this code, modify it, and use it for your own applications needs, commercial or not. It's under the MIT license. I can't speak for how Google's terms of service are, so you'll have to follow those too. But uh, yeah, this has been a probably one of my longer videos here, coming in at 15 minutes, an Optox video. You guys have a great day, and thank you for watching.